Book 71 of 2019 was Lowborn by Kerry Hudson. Uh, this book is all about uh, the detrimental impacts of poverty uh, on a person, on a family um, and on a society kind of in general. Kerry Hudson is it's almost like memoir-ish in that she's going, I was going to say memoir-esque then, in that she's going back to her roots. She's going back to all her like old haunts and the places where she grew up and kind of seeing them through her adult perspective. Um, it was interesting to kind of see the uh, cyclic nature of poverty um, and this book also challenges the views of conservative people who are perhaps suggesting that people who are poor are poor because it's their own fault and that they need to work more or whatever but actually what this book shows is that it doesn't matter how hard you work because of systemic reasons it's very difficult to break that cycle of poverty uh, often people who are in impoverished uh, situations are that way because of the values of the family that are kind of perpetuated uh, through generations so for example uh, Kerry's mother I don't think had, had got any qualifications and so she um, didn't really have a, a high paid job so she was you know in impoverished situations um, and she would find a solution to that by dating a man uh, to you know to bring some income in for the family and that obviously had it, its issues um, because as well the mother would be very depressed at times because obviously you know she's got young children and she can't you know feed them and support them and nobody really wants to help her out um and so because of that Kerry's kind of got this this value that education is not important so she truants from school um and she doesn't get her qualifications but what something that she did mention which I thought was quite interesting was that as a as a poor child um you are brought up in a way where you don't have um what's the word like you don't have etiquette you don't behave in a kind of refined way you can almost be seen as kind of coarse in your behavior uh, a bit rough as some people like to call it and so you get people not wanting their children to socialize with children like that but what you're actually doing is rather than saving your child from the effects of this naughty child, this child that's growing up without discipline, you're actually causing a systemic problem because in society, those children are ignored and forgotten and blamed for the way that they've been brought up. Like, you know, Kerry Hudson probably didn't have any idea that she was any different to any of the other children. Uh, you know, she mentions that she used to smell quite a bit because obviously her mother didn't, you know, instill personal hygiene in her and so she she's kind of around these children who are bullying her and who are you know calling her for for being poor and she can't do anything about that so she doesn't have any love or belonging with anybody either so it's kind of almost like poverty is like the root um well not even the root is it it's kind of like the the thing that's happening but that causes lots of other problems which then you can't really you know get out of you can't you know it's like clawing yourself out of uh, of the pit i'm thinking of like batman when uh is it what's he called bane like claws out of the of i think he actually jumps doesn't he but you know it kind of gives me that image of it trying to like come up from from the depths of, of you know poverty um kerry hudson as well made me kind of think about how privileged i've been as as a young child in that i was always well fed I was always clothed I always felt safe and felt kind of like you know I had a home and somewhere to go to whereas Kerry's life she's just going from pillar to post all the time and you know not really being wanted by anyone and it kind of just made me feel about how if people have that start in life how else do you expect them to behave as an adult like it's not going to be any different is it that the kind of that that cycle's perpetuated and because they've not been loved they don't know how to love their children and it kind of just carries on and i feel really sorry for people that are from families like that that don't obviously every family's got its problems and no family's perfect but to have you know you're already poor and then to have all those problems as well on top it just kind of it just makes me feel a little bit sad for them um i'm trying to think if there was anything else um, you know, there's there was a comment about how her mother was always kind of drinking alcohol or smoking cigarettes, and 
a lot of people who are from privileged backgrounds judge that as well if you've got enough money to spend on alcohol and cigarettes then you know you've got enough money for food or whatever but if you think about someone's life how crap it must be that is the only level of escapism you know they can't go on holiday they can't take a break from work they can't relax or whatever they're always constantly worrying about money and whether they can actually feed their children feed themselves and their only escape is to just numb it by getting drunk. Like, of course you would. And I can see, you know, why people would, would turn to drugs and things like that because it would just take, it would be like a temporary release from that pain that you're probably in. Um, I'm trying to think if there was any other kind of um, things that I've not, or oh, another thing that Kerry Hudson is a real advocate for is, is support services and intervention from like social services and things because they're a real lifeline for families such as those who perhaps don't have guidance from the parents and so they could have guidance from outside. Uh, you know, obviously with this government, with austerity measures in the UK, lots of centres have been cl closed down and things, but they're actually a vital lifeline for people that are are struggling and are in poverty like it has a detrimental impact on our society as a whole and that we should be putting money into things like that to, to help people um you know become better parents because they've never been taught themselves how to be a good parent um so it's kind of like that 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 saving grace really for them um and for anybody that finds themselves in that situation as well um you know, we've not all been privileged to understand how to work well in society and how to, you know, benefit in society. You know, just from the way that we talk and things like that can prevent us from getting a job, can prevent us from having the same opportunities as other people because, you know, education is a massive thing that, that gives people that support outside their family to be, be able to come like a functioning member of society. And without that, then where are you? What have you got? Like, it's quite difficult to make your way in, in, a, in a world where everyone else seems to be more able than you are because you've come from a, from a background of privilege. Um, what was really nice in this uh, kind of memoir was that Kerry Hudson's now got a relationship with her husband and she feels loved and she feels supported and she's achieved things in her life perhaps because she's had that support from her husband and it goes to show that no matter where you've come from you can you know get to where you want to go you can be successful in life but you do need some kind of love and support from other people um and so you know as I'm always saying you know it's it's beneficial for our society to be compassionate with people and to help where we can and to provide love for people that perhaps didn't have it when they were growing up um you know, if people can't show love, it's usually because they've not been given love or there's been some kind of issue there. And so it's kind of, you know, good to, to kind of have that in mind when you're interacting with people. Um, I didn't think that this was amazing. And I did find at times that Hudson's very kind of, she victimises herself a lot of the time. And I kind of thought to myself, you know, she's done so well for herself and she has still got issues. Anxiety seems to be one that she's probably struggling with. I uh, just read in between the lines. Um, but you know she's done really well for herself and and she should be proud of that and and think more of it in a kind of you know she's kind of overcome it rather than becoming a victim of the system you know i think that's the wrong kind of way to you know you can't blame everything on your childhood like you've not been a child the whole time and it might restrict you in some in some circumstances but there's a, a time and a place where you take responsibility for the fact that you're an adult and you could change your behavior and yes it will be difficult to undo everything that's happened to you in terms of like you know your your triggers and things like that but it, it is possible to kind of try and um address that and i think that was kind of lost in in the book and i thought it was a bit weird as well that she's going back to places and like just talking to random people and it was like she's standing outside people's houses like wanting to like look inside and stuff it was a bit weird um so yeah it was it was interesting to see it from the perspective of someone who has grown up in poverty and who still struggles with those issues as she's older so it's definitely worth a listen uh, she narrates it really well as well on, on the audio um so yeah